um, which is run by three ladies. All of them are here. Uh, we have Datin Rose Ismail here as well, who, who is a co-founder of, of Sense, together with Rita Sim. Um, and um, we have Ms. Fui here as well, who, who is the CEO at the moment for Sense. So the whole of Sense is actually here today in this room. And Datin Rose is, I think, will, will be able to answer some questions that might come up as well. Um, so I, um, both, um, both Rita and Ms. Fui have been here before, so I don't, I don't think I need to go too much into an, into an introduction of it. It's all on the paper that you all received. Um, suffice it to say that they are major commentators on the Malaysian scene, um, and, um, and their think tank is not really affiliated in any real sense to any, any political party. They are quite neutral in their analysis. Both quantitative. <laughs> well, no one's ever, ever totally. <laughs> um, yeah, and um, so a, a lot of the work are quantitative and qualitative as well. Um, so we invited them here now about six weeks or so after the, the 13th general election in Malaysia. Uh, that I'm sure left quite a lot of us confounded. The results uh, have been quite quite mixed. Um, so to get a clearer understanding of what's what happened and what's going to happen and what is happening, we have Rita Sim here and Miss Wee to to um, to enlighten us. We'll start with Miss uh, with Rita, I think. Um, yeah, please go ahead. Um, first of all, uh, good morning, Ki Bing, Professor Wang. We are really honoured that you are here also to join us, um, Ambassadors, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are very pleased to be uh, back at ISIS on the invitation of uh, Ki Bing and his uh, colleagues, and thank you for making all the arrangements. Um, maybe we would just like to uh, start by sharing with you that uh, we worked on the, uh, the build-up to the general elections for almost one and a half years to two years. Uh, we run also polls, and we were running polls uh, right up to two days before uh, the polling day. And it was actually very close to what we saw when the results uh, uh, came out. The presentation will be in two parts. Um, I will do the quantitative, the numbers bit, and halfway uh, through the presentation, I will pass to my colleague Fui, uh, who will go through the qualitative and the uh, poll results uh, post-GE. Uh, uh, if I may start now. What we did on, in May of last year, on, uh, in 2012, we actually wrote a joint paper with uh, J.P. Morgan on the political analysis and the risk, uh, or political risk in Malaysia. <coughs> And this is what we said a year ago, uh, just over a year ago, that uh, BN will come back with 137 seats plus or minus 5%, with UMNO retaining top position with more than 78 seats. And that happened. BN came back with 133 seats and uh, UMNO with 88 seats. Uh, we said that it was very likely that BN, UMNO will win back Kedah, and they did. Uh, we thought that with the work that BN was actually doing on the ground that they could deny the opposition of Pakatan Rakyat two-thirds in Penang and Kelantan, but that didn't happen. So we will share with you what happened there. Uh, also, there was a, a tremendous amount of firepower from BN in Selangor, and we thought that it would, there could be a win. It, in, it depended on the timing at that time and issues of the day, there were windows that we could see that uh, BN could win back Selangor, but they did not, okay? And the implications of not winning back Selangor. And Perak was going to be 50-50, but a year ago, this was what we saw, but BN won uh, Perak uh, back with the state seats, so with four, just uh, four more seats, okay? They will do worse in Sabah and Sarawak and Johor, but will not lose the states, and that did happen. But in Sabah and uh, Sarawak, Fui from Sabah will also explain to you what happened in East Malaysia. It, it's probably what the Pakatan Rakyat did not do. That's why they didn't get Sabah and Sarawak. Okay? 
and probably have higher marginal popular, uh, popular roads. Uh, and we thought that the Malay votes would swing back uh, to BN, but that also did not happen. Okay. Um, these are really the details of uh, the seat contested on the BN side. AMNO plus their 12 uh, component parties, right? With the number of co uh, seats contested in 2013 uh, and 2008. And I think that it's quite widely reported that in this uh, general election of Malaysia, what had happened is that BN had come in with less of the popular votes, uh, but still came into power with 133 seats. Uh, this was the and this has been now uh, kind of the Pakatan Rayat will play on this that uh, the BN government is not legitimate because they didn't get the popular votes. But Malaysia is first past the post system, so you can, based on the uh, uh, come into power with less popular votes. Okay, and the interesting part that I would like to point out that if you uh, go a little bit down the, um, you see, there's MCA, MIC, Garakan, PPP, and all the various other um, uh, component parties. Uh, if you look at PBB, uh, which contested 14, and this is the, this is Taip Mahmoud seat, right, uh, uh, state, right? They actually won all the 14 uh, uh, seats that they contested, uh, but with 232,000 votes only. So, you know, small numbers can have big impact okay, in, um, in uh, Malaysia. Uh, what is very interesting is if you look, AMNO has emerged as the, the single largest party, and they hold today about 29% of the, uh, the uh, so-called popular votes. Eh? And if you look at 47.47, that means AMNO alone is almost 30% of the popular votes, uh, with the balance about 18% shared out uh, among, the, uh, among the 12 component parties. So it's actually really BN almost, uh, there's a common commentary that BN almost equals AMNO in a way. All right? uh, but we'll, see, uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more. Now, if you look at what happened with Pakatan Rakyat, uh, with past uh, PKR and DAP, in 2013, they actually showed an improvement uh, over 2003 uh, in terms of their popular uh, votes, uh, with DAP winning about 80% of, uh, of their seats because they won uh, uh, 38 out of their 51 contested uh, seats and they become the single largest uh, party in the uh, opposition coalition, okay? And with uh, Pakatan Keadilan coming up with, uh, they only won one third of their 99 uh, seats that they contested, and PAS won 21. And here you would note that the, of the total votes, uh, because what we were trying to show is that they did have a very significant improvement uh, on their popular votes, uh, 2008 compared to 20, uh, uh, 2008 and 2013. Now, uh, just to give you a bit of a background, uh, I'm, most of you would know this, there are 222 parliamentary seats that were contested and 505 state seats. The only state that did not contest the state seat was in Sarawak. Of the, there were 13.3 million roughly registered voters. 16 million were eligible to vote, and there was 84.84 percent turnout. Um, one of the reasons that I wanted to show the breakdown by ethnic, by ethnicity on the voter demographics is that, as you are aware, Malaysia has a population of about 28 million, and the um, Malay Muslim uh, Bumiputra split is about 60% uh, based on the population demographic. But when you look at voter demographics, right, it is 53.42% Malays, Chinese occupying almost 30% uh, of the voter demographics, with the Indians at 7.32 and others at 9.62, which is um, sort of Sabah and Sarawak and others, okay? So this is, the, this is very interesting. The, the, the population demographic doesn't actually match the voter uh, demographics. Uh -huh. And so 
then this is the age group uh, breakdown of the 13 point, about 13.3 million voters on, on the Q4 2012 electoral roll, the actual numbers, uh, you would see that 44% of the voters are now below the age of 40. Okay. Um, it's very interesting because new voters and younger voters uh, have a great impact on the outcome of the elections. Now, in terms of the new voters, when we did the analysis, um, 23 point, about 24% of the, uh, the voters were actually new voters, of which 60% of the new voters are actually Malay, uh, Malay voters, all right, with the Chinese at 22.62 and uh, 6.9 with the Indians and others at 10.94. So actually, it was the Malay, the Malo, the Malay voters uh, did come, new voters did come in significantly. Okay. And of the first-time voters, 68% of the first-time voters are below the age of 30. So there was actually, from after 2008 up to uh, Q4 2012, there was a very big program uh, from both sides, whether it was BN, uh, NGO groups, uh, they were very, very busy uh, registering registering new voters and people who, you know, new voters uh, for a number of years. That's why you can see it's the biggest jump uh, for, year, for many elections, uh, since many elections. So 68% of the first-time voters are below the age of 30. Um, just a, a recap. So BN won 47.5% of the popular votes uh, and 60% of the parliamentary seats uh, due to the first-past-the-post system. And in the state seats, BN won 54% of the state seats with 47% of the popular votes. Again, because of first past the post system. All right. In the 222 parliamentary seats, it's very interesting uh, that Malaysia is really a three-legged stool. Uh, and you see the number 114. One, 114 seats are actually Malay majority seats. And uh, 52 are mixed seats and 56 seats comes from uh, East Malaysia, Sabah and Sarawak. So you can't actually, uh, you, when you want to actually contest the 222, you have to bear in mind uh, the sp this, this split uh, of the, where the ethnic uh, breakdown uh, are. Okay. And Peninsula actually takes up 166 of the 222 seats, which is 75% of the, uh, of the, uh, 222, and Sabah and Sarawak have 56, uh, and BN won 64.7% uh, um, in Peninsula, Malaysia, but won about 83.9% of Sabah and Sarawak. They came in with 47 seats in Sabah and Sarawak and 86 in Peninsula and Malaysia, which gave them that 133 seats. So actually, BN did come back with Sabah and Sarawak supporting them very strongly. And we will discuss that as we uh, go on. Now, what we did was that we charted how Malaysian vote, uh, voted uh, from 1990 to, 20 uh, to 2013. That is how many? One, two, three, four, five, six elections. Uh. And you can also see that Every party uh, in 2013 did have an increase in their number of popular, in terms of their votes, uh, but not enough to uh, make, uh, well, not enough for BN to, to make it to two thirds, and they had that as their goal, all right, but they didn't get it. Um, what is also very important to note is that that high voter turnout, you know, the goal to vote uh, was very aggressively pursued uh, by both sides. And people were flying back, even from New Zealand, Australia. They took all the trouble to come back just to vote. Uh, I think the causeway was also quite jammed uh, out in Singapore, all coming back. And returning voters is something that we need to also discuss, right? Uh, especially what had happened in Kelantan, what returning voters did, uh, and people who came back uh, to uh, vote. The other interesting point to also note that in Malaysia, in 2013, there were 16, over 16 plus million that were eligible to vote. But 
but because the number of vote casted was around about 11 million. So there are still 5 million Malaysians that are eligible to vote. Uh, they are out there who, didn't, who are either still not registered and did not come back to vote. Okay. So this is also very interesting because in Malaysia, we don't have, uh, it's not an automatic registration. Uh, not, uh, like in Singapore, keeping it's auto, right? It's yeah, obligatory. obligatory. So there are still 5 million Malaysians out there based on the 2013 uh, gazetted list uh, that didn't come back to, to vote, either did not register or registered and did not come back to vote at all. Okay. So there's a big, still a big group out there. Okay. Um, you would see, you see, we thought that um, we were thinking coming to 2013, who would be the, on the opposition side, who would be the weakest link uh, in the combination of DAP, Keadilan and, and PAS? Um, but it looks as if now that the opposition parties have definitely uh, strengthened uh, with their very significant increase uh, in their uh, number of popular votes, uh, especially for uh, Keadilan. Um, you can you can see the jump uh, in the numbers uh, since from 1999 uh, right down to 2013. This is also based on the number of seats that they uh, contested as well. Uh. And surprisingly, it ended up that PASS became kind of like the weakest, the, a bit of the weakest link uh, in the whole chain and DAP the strongest uh, uh, party in Pakatan Rakyat right now. And if you look at the total, all the 33 political parties in Malaysia, number one would be AMNO at 88 seats, and the number two party is DAP at 38 seats, and so on, you know. Okay. So you still always have to deal with the single largest party, and that is AMNO mm. in any configuration. Right. Now, this is the part that, you know, there was a lot of debate after the uh, elections when it came out, when, whether it was a Chinese tsunami or whether it was a Malaysian tsunami. Okay. And um, if you look at the support rate from 1995 uh, right through to 2013, uh, um, there was, actually, there was a Malay shift uh, because we expected that there would be a Malay uh, shift back to BN, but that did not happen. And in fact, they dropped uh, another 4% uh, compared to 2008. So there's also now a sizable Malay community that is against BN, but we will go through the reasons for that because the way that they're against BN is different from the Chinese wanting change. Uh, you would notice that the Chinese actually swang in major, uh, in a very big way, and it confirms the point that the Chinese did want change, and it was a minus 22, you know, swing against the uh, BN. In fact, in some of the areas, it's quite interesting. Uh, up in site like Perak, right, when we look through the polling district, uh, the one of the leaders only had like 13 votes, uh, Chinese votes, uh, in one of their polling box. <laughs> So, and uh, I mean, in Selangor, um, and especially in Selangor, uh, the Chinese support of BN probably dropped even below 10% in some areas. Some places was around only about 7%, you know. So there was a major, I mean, the Chinese gave a very clear message that they uh, wanted change. They thought that their Malay and Indian friends and East Malaysians would come along with them the same way, but that did not happen. Enough to make the to topple uh, BN. Okay, the Indians, the Indians are also very interesting. Uh, most of the votes did come back, but it still there was it is is shifting is shifting away uh, from BN as well. And the reason that we wanted to show this chart is that in 1995, uh, when somebody was earning three thousand to five thousand ringgit, uh, it was quite a good feel kind of factor. You know, the economy was booming and so on and so forth. But you fast forward fifteen years on, right, or ten fifteen years on, your salary and your cost of living has risen very high. But you, your your salary hasn't improved, and your quality of life has not imp improved. Uh, the, this also is one of the reasons uh, for. Um, voters getting angry, you know. It, it's just, 
um, it's just not based on the because they have urbanized. There's they are all under financial and urban stresses uh, when they're living in the uh, in the cities. Okay, so this was what had happened. Uh, so we we will argue the point through whether it was um, there was really a, a Chinese uh, tsunami or a Malaysian tsunami. We gave a little bit of weightage, but my colleague Fui will go through that. Okay, you may not be able to see this very clearly, but what we wanted to highlight here was that if you look at uh, Kedah, Kelantan, Penang, Perak, and Selangor, you can see very clearly now that especially in Selangor. Uh, you will find that about 60 to 65 percent uh, of the voters living in Selangor are very much now pro, are in favour of Pakatan right yet. So BN has to do a lot of work to get back Selangor if they were to ever going to get it back. All right, and in in Penang, it's firmly in the hands of the opposition uh, with about 70 percent of the voter support uh, for DAP there. And actually, um, BN did worse. Uh, they only had 10 seats out of the 40 uh, seats, and um, they did not. BN did not deny uh, Penang two thirds, and for various reasons as well, in terms of qualitative that we can uh, go through. And it is in Kedah. Uh, it is in Kedah uh, that uh, when Mukesh Mahathir won and became the chief minister there, he did win back with popular votes. But what is very interesting is Kelantan, right? And we will spend a little bit of time also afterwards to discuss with you on what had happened in, in Kelantan. You see, BN assumed that they were going to get it back. But if you look at the popular votes, uh, they are coming quite close. There's only a 10% difference in the popular votes uh, between BN and Pakata and pass there, all right? But the thing that did BN in were the returning voters, people who lived in Kuala Lumpur and Selangor, who then went back to Kelantan and vote, decided, uh-uh, you ain't going to have Kelantan back, all right? So that was um, uh, what happened. But w this is like state by state by state. And the reason that um, overall, right, the Pakatan Rakyat actually got more popular votes uh, because most of those votes came uh, when you totaled it up, uh, came from Penang and Selangor. That was what happened. But this should be enough, uh, hopefully, to wake Amno up. Uh, that there in Johor, in Trangganu, uh, there are quite massive swings uh, away from them and they got to bear in mind uh, what they're going to do for the 2014 uh, GE. BN's strategy will be very interesting, but for Pakatan Rakyat, I mean, it's, uh, f they, they're getting closer now. Uh, they're getting closer to the, the finishing line. Uh, right? Now, why we wanted to highlight this was that we observed Selangor and Johor quite a lot. BN lost actually did worse in Selangor. They lost uh, 44 of the state seats there. And 22 were Malay majority seats, okay? So it's not entirely true to say that it was a Chinese uh, tsunami, but a lot of these uh, Malay seats uh, were, yeah, they were also mixed, uh, you know? There were only a few that was more than 60% Malays. So there is also Malay anger on the ground against BN and AMNO, okay? And of course, the AP won most of the Chinese majority seats. In fact, it was interesting because normally MCA will contest 40 seats, but this time they contested only 37. And Gerak Khan would contest 11, making it up about 50, you know, 51. If you add 40 and 11, it's exactly 51. And the AP will contest mainly uh, the, DA, the MCA and Gerak Khan seats. Okay. But they won 38 of the 51 seats that they contested. All right, they have done very, very well, and it's actually quite a clear signal of um, what the Chinese community wants. And uh, eight were mixed seats. Okay, now what is very interesting is that if you remember the first slide that I showed you, that the Malay voter population was 53, about 53 point something percent. All right, but in Selangor. 
the voter population is only 50% for Malays. And if you look at the Chinese population, uh, it's actually almost 34%. And the Indians are uh, at 14.5%. So what it actually means is that there's no way that UMNO or BN can actually take back the state without Chinese or Indian and other support. Okay. You just can't do it. You just can't win the state back uh, without Chinese and Indian support. All right because of the way that it's uh, being configured. Now, if I show you Johor, which is even more interesting because Pakatan Rakyat as a uh, party certainly, or as a coalition, certainly has moved in and made inroads into uh, Johor. And BN lost 18 of the state seats, uh, 12 of which, which is Chinese majority seats, three Malay majority seats, and three mixed seats. But if you look at the voter population, Johor has got the mo uh, very high Chinese, you know, 38.78, which is about 39%, uh, and with Malays 53 and Indians at 6.55. So this, this is the uh, very interesting uh, ethnic voter mix uh, that we have, especially in uh, Slangor and... Um, in Slangor and Johor. Malaysian politics is actually quite complex. Uh. If you were to analyze Sabah and Sarawak, it's even more <laughs> fragmented. But I'll leave it to my Sabahan colleague <laughs> to do that. Okay, um, okay. what had happened? Uh, at this point, uh, I'm just going to pass the presentation uh, to my colleague Fui, uh, who will go through the qualitative aspects and what had happened, plus the post-election uh, polls that we ran. Fui, over to you. Mm. Thank you. Hey, uh, thank you very much, uh, Rita. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I think there's a lot of uh, debate, uh, uh, a lot of the background that Rita has actually provided you with, uh, you know, hard data that has just come out from the, um, from the GE, uh, uh, 13 uh, GE. So these are hard facts that uh, we've looked at and we've actually dissected it and, and analyzed it uh, from what we see to be, um, you know, uh, 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 then uh, where, where I think everyone wants to know, okay, what, what actually happened, you know, what actually took place on the ground. Uh, certainly, I think a lot of, uh, even prior to the general elections, we were already invited up here in, in, in various forums to ask, what is it that the Chinese want? So there was a lot of debate and a lot of discussion already. What exactly is... Uh, uh, the Chinese anger all about. Uh, really, I, I think it was easy, I think, as a structure, as an institution for MCA to be up there and to be lambasted. And, uh, uh, and, and a lot of it is because of you know, MCA and, and so on and so forth. But I, I think the, the Chinese anger is really a lot uh, deeper than just uh, an, in, an institution. It was a lot of pent up anger uh, over the many decades over uh, you know the so called uh, the second class and pendatang uh, treatment you know in, whether in, in the civil service whether in its in the public education system the education system per se uh, uh, the political system uh, even within the political landscape and so so on I think that. Uh, undoubtedly, in the in the minds of the Chinese, it's something that is really in the in in the forefront. Okay, class issues, but over the decades, also because of the Amno uh, hegemony and also uh, the patronage system, I think it's also very clear that the class issue has actually deepened the Chinese resentment. Not now that we know, it's also uh, the, the, it's also a Malay issue. It's not just a Chinese issue, but I think. With the Chinese, I think it's compounded uh, even even more so. Uh, brain drain, of course, has impacted the Chinese talent pool within within uh, Malaysia, uh, and and we see a lot of uh, uh, the deterioration of skills and talent within Malaysia that has actually slowly kind of reinforces that. Uh, in a way, that kind of second class, uh, in, in, you know, the self-esteem, uh, uh, um, the, 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 
self-esteem you know, in, in the community. And the duration of skill sets have also, learned, uh, have also led to very low incomes. I mean, this is where you know, retail was saying, you know, uh, three, 20 years ago, 3,000 could probably you know, get you somewhere in, in Malaysia, but in the urban areas with a household income of 3,000 uh, ringgit, it's actually uh, it's a real struggle. You know. uh, SMEs themselves have also become very uncompetitive. Uh, over the, the decades due to you know, also global reasons. Uh, and Chinese education, uh, for some reason, have not, I mean, you know, in general, have not really lifted the competitiveness. Of course, then, you know, you, you, it's easy then, compounded with this anger, to blame it on policies and so on. And uh, we have found that, uh, also, I think it's, it's, it's also very clear with, with this um, uh, protest, what we call, uh, you know, with 90% of the Chinese community voting against you, I think there's certainly talks of uh, a, a renegotiation of the 1957 uh, social contract, your NEP and so on and so forth. Next slide, please, uh, Rita. You, you are. Thank you. Okay, this is where it was very interesting. I think we said uh, we, we, we thought that we, uh, the BN could come back with higher popularity votes. Uh, there was a lot of outreach uh, in the last three, uh, certainly since the Najib administration came in. There was a lot of outreach into uh, getting the young Malay voters and it always has been identified as uh, what you call the new, uh, new ground for UMNO to, to, to win over. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this has, had, has not happened. I think 60 to 70 percent of the young uh, Malay voters that came, uh, that were registered this time, did not vote for uh, UMNO stroke BN. Uh, why? There was also a lot of young Malays who are very angry, uh, looking at the in uh, also income uh, issues, class class issue, income issues. Uh, they're financial. A lot of them are financially stressed, especially those earning with you know, monthly income of less than a thousand, thousand five, two thousand, that kind of thing. Uh, in Selangor and in KL, I think it, it is a very, very difficult situation to be in, having to have you know young children going to school, you know, having to pay tolls, petrol, cars, so on and so forth. Uh, these are the issues that are really already brewing in the urban areas. Of course, there were a lot of them were also sold promises by uh, the opposition to deliver lower petrol uh, prices. Uh, you know, if, if uh, Pakatan were to come in tomorrow itself, you know, petrol prices are going to uh, drop by 30, uh, you know, 30 cents or whatever it was, cheaper cars, abolishment of uh, uh, tolls and uh, loans, PTPTN loans are student loans. Okay, student loans are going to be uh, basically you know, uh, uh, written off. And a lot of these young urban Malays have actually gone to uh, colleges, gone to uh, skills, uh, 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 vocational training, are sitting there wondering, why, what has NAP uh, done for me? Because I've gone to college, I've gone to university, and I'm still sitting here uh, earning you know, 2,000, 1,000, 2,000, that kind of income. And what has it done for me? So, and 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 as I as we explained, uh, as Rita was saying, I think the resentment and the anti-BN uh, uh, sentiments not to be not to be um, lumped together. I mean, while they're very sick and tired of the corruption, the cronyism, the nepotism uh, within the uh, BN. I think there is definitely the resentment, uh, particularly towards the, uh, you know, the elite groups, uh, and it's always seen the Chinese as you know the more privileged class community. Uh, there was a lot of that too, you know. Uh, so when Utusan came out with Apalagi Chinamau in the uh, what what else do the Chinese want in the front page of Utusan, that actually has. A lot of a lot of resonance. I think we cannot deny that you know it is because it was just playing. It is not that it's just playing to the the the, the galleries, but really it, it it does reflect very um a very real. It, that is the reality. It's a very real sense of resentment there. Okay, of course, fed up with cronyism, so on security issues. You know, with kidnappings and and you know children going missing, all the kind of things are, are you know compounded. Uh, what we what we term to be the young urban Malays. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, the power of the returning voters. Um, very, what was very clear was that there was about 120,000 outstation voters, mostly in their 20s and 40s, who've actually brought with them that young urban 
uh, uh, sentiment. You know, they may have a very comfortable uh, living. Their parents maybe have a, a fairly comfortable uh, uh, lifestyle in the kampong, but when they come, but they don't. They don't enjoy those simply because they, 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 they hate the fact that they have to leave their children uh, with the grandparents and they're having to go, go out into the, to, to the cities to find jobs where they're living in you know, small little cubicles and having to struggle and send money home. So they are the ones that are bringing in a lot of that resentment. In fact, uh, on the day uh, before uh, polling, uh, on the eve of polling itself, I was in, I was in Pahang, I was in Selango. Up, uh, right up into Sabah Bernam and, and Tanjung Karang and all those kind of areas. And it was amazing the kind of the cars that were coming in uh, from, from KL and, and the city areas. So every, and, and I was calling uh, Rita and, and, and Rose on the phone. I say, look, you know, I really, you know, despite all this, I don't, I don't care what SB reports are coming in. I say, we're go I mean, BN is going to lose the language, okay? There's just no way they kind of win. No, 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 no. You know, all these reports came in very positive. And I'm like, hey, no way, okay? Why? Because there were just people actually on the streets uh, in the uh, on the highway with these pass flags, fl uh, 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 waving the pass flags, right? And it says honk if you support us okay, in, in, in Bahasa. And every almost every single car was actually honking, you know. So I say, no. <laughs> so this is what you call the power of the returning voter, okay? Uh, not to be underestimated. So even in the late uh, tw uh, 2012, polls had already indicated that many, uh, uh, although many Kelantanese, local Kelantanese who were living Kelantans, were actually getting wary of past and were actually ready for change. But when the returning voters came back, uh, it, it kind of like you know turned the whole 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 thing uh, uh, the other way. Uh, older Malays, uh, of course, also there were also uh, older Malays who were actually not happy uh, with past giving in so uh, into in, into uh, 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 that that kind of you know in in that sense they also you know vote, voted against. I mean, in a very kind of twisted manner, they just. Angry, you know, a lot of people are just very, very angry. And Pahang, Perak, Trungganyo, and Johor also encountered the similar incident, uh, in, uh, similar experiences. Meaning, you know, with returning uh, voters coming back, and, and and they were just, you know, just just wanted wanted to 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 be, look, you know, we want we want a change. We're sick and tired of what's going on here. Okay, next. Okay, Sabah and Sarawak to me, it wasn't so much how BN won it, more how the opposition lost it. Uh, certainly in Sabah, there was already a very, very strong uh, uh, mood, uh, I think, for change in the, including, I mean, let's, let's leave the, the, the urban areas alone. I mean, basically the Chinese had already decided they wanted to support DAP. I mean, that was very clear. But I think in the KDM areas, the Kadazan, Dusun, Morod areas, uh, the, it was already, um, I, I would say the ground is actually right for, for picking. But I think the opposition was so, in, in, in such a disarray, I, I think that was really the main reason. And that a lot of them have actually hopped uh, parties so many, so many different times over the last three decades. I, I, I really, I myself as a Sabah, I get confused. Girl, girl, I don't really know what, what position they're taking and, and, and which party they belong to now. And then tomorrow could be a different one. And that was very interesting. They had a very good war cry. They had a very good slogan, Ini Kalila, you know, this time. Uh, was actually, it came up, uh, Jeffrey Kittingan came up with Ini Kalila, you know, which is the uh, star war cry. But then the opposition, PKR, came in and hijacked it. PAS came in and hijacked it. DAP came in and hijacked it. So that just con created a lot of confusion there. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that, that was one of those. I mean, these are all tactical, uh, tactical uh, moves. That I that actually uh, caused them to, to to probably not win some of the seats that they should have, and although the Chinese wanted a DAP as the new political champion, uh, PKR and PAS uh, are just beginning to make inroads. So, 14 general elections will will, will be something that I, I think you know the the KDL and, and PAS would really uh, have to you know have a serious. Uh, uh, look into how they're going to actually make real inroads like the, what they did in Selangor and, uh, and, and, and Johor. So both sides, both sides, okay, were throwing a lot of money and it still works in East Malaysia. So that's how it works. Okay, next. 
Uh, what I've done also, the next part of my presentation actually goes into, uh, what, uh, I think, more uh, uh, new grounds of how we see uh, Malaysia, I think, moving forward. It is still very, very um, convoluted and very cloudy at this point in time until such time that the party elections, particularly AMNO, uh, 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 until the AMNO elections are over. Okay, that would be the end of the year. I think we're not going to be able to see a clear indication on how policies are going to move forward until next year, both economically, uh, uh, even the government transformation and so on. Uh, we're not going to have a very clear idea what, how things are going to actually play out until uh, next year, minimum. You know, it could be longer than that. Okay, so we did some polls, very interesting. Uh, do you accept the results? And we did this say about a week, uh, yeah, a week after the, you know, less than a week after the elections, and we just uh, because we felt that we had to do it quickly because that would actually capture how uh, people voted, because people don't vote with their with their heads, right? They don't vote rationally. People vote with their hearts. Okay, so while it's still fresh in their minds, whether it's anger or emotions or whatever emotions that they felt we had, we thought we wanted to just capture it very quickly how people voted with their hearts. Okay, because if you leave it longer and say, oh, because I voted because of this, and people will start rationalizing. We really wanted to actually capture the emotions, the sentiment, the actual emotions of people, how, how they actually, and why they voted the way they, they, they voted when they actually went in on the 5th. So, you know, do they, uh, do you accept the results of the recent elections? Set nearly 70% of the Malays say that, yes, we do. Chinese, on the other hand, 73% say no. Uh, again, uh, just to recap what Rita said to you uh, just now, a lot of them felt that they, they really believed, okay? So I, I would say, yeah, I think 80% of my friends, would, 80, 90%, 80, I wouldn't say 90, I would say 70 to 80% of the Chinese, uh, of my friends anyway, even within my own circles, actually truly, truly believed that uh, the Malays are also, the Malays and Indians are also angry enough and fed up, uh, just like us, uh, to, to, to be able to change the government. And they really believed that there, were go there was going to be a real change in the government. Uh, Indians, 63. But B, okay, I'll just explain what BI means. Bumi Putra Islam. These are, okay, BI, BBI uh, are just general terms that we use. Uh, Bumi Putra Islam and Bumi Putra Bukan Islam. Non Bumi Putras. So uh, this is Sabah and Sarawak, okay? All right, so there is a difference. In, in, in Sabah and Sarawak, there's, you, can't, you can't cut the, the demographics in you know, Chinese Indians uh, because there's hardly any Indians there. So it's actually Chinese, Bumi Putra Islam, and Bumi Putra Bukan Islam. Okay? So non, non Muslims. And Muslims, non Muslims, and you have your Chinese. So it's interesting to see uh, what, does this, what does this mean? Uh, uh, I, I think a lot of the, um, a lot of in, in the urban areas, Chinese and Indians particularly, uh, they, they've, they have not accepted the results or they, they, they at that, certainly at that time, simply because they felt that the BN uh, uh, had already had cheated their, um, their, their rights, you know, uh, and this is, this is not right because we were, we were meant to win, we were meant to win, okay? Now, was it a Chinese tsunami or a Malaysian tsunami? 65.8% Malay say it's a Malaysian tsunami, but almost 100% of the Chinese that we polled said that it is a Malaysian tsunami. Indians also on about 90%, 68% uh, 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 Muslims in um, Sabah and Sarawak, and non-Muslims, 80% say that it's a Malaysian tsunami. Uh, I think it's also very interesting to see, again, it may look like it's a unanimous uh, so-called support, for what they believe to be a Malaysian tsunami, however, for different reasons. Malay simply because, as I've said to you, the young Malays also want to be counted. Okay, well, they want to be counted that hey, we were also fed up with you know all your uh, nonsense. Uh, whereas Chinese, basically, they're saying don't blame us because it's not just us. Okay, it's not just so it's not a Chinese tsunami because we don't want to be blamed. Okay, next. Okay, what will the 13 GE be remembered for. 
And while uh, Rita was actually uh, talking, and I, I, I wanted to come up with some, you know, some, some, some clever sort of acronyms and see whether we can actually remember what really what actually represented uh, GE13. Uh, I came up with the three Bs. Okay, suddenly it was while we, uh, sitting here, I think it should be remembered for bunglers, blackouts, and bad guys. This is three Bs, the B, 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 okay? Why did I say Bangla? Because uh, on the, that day itself, I think if you, if you were on the ground, uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure how, how many of you were actually in Malaysia on that day. Uh, two days, I think two or three days prior to voting day itself, there was this SMS going on to say that there were 40,000 Bangladeshis that have been sh uh, 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 flown in by I don't know where and by what, and they're all going to go out and vote, okay, illegally. Because they have fake ICs, they were given fake ICs, they're going to vote. And uh, uh, it's amazing. It was just uh, some. I I I I I actually finished voting on that day itself uh, on 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 the fifth. And after that, I thought, oh, I, because I voted in Bangs in uh, Lamba Pantai, right? So as usual, I was on a Sunday, so I went to have my hair done. I said, if it's going to be a riot, I want my hair to be nice, okay? <laughs> so I got there, you know, Bangsa is a, it's a pretty kind of like, you know, very upper class and all that kind of thing. So I went to have my hair done, and there were fund managers who, who saw me and said, hey, Fu, you're here. I said, wow, you're very early. Huh? I said, then she said, yeah la, I said, we got to go bangla, you know, that kind of thing. I said, hey, please la, you know, you're a fund manager. I mean, people actually believed um, it, lock, stock and barrel. And I was thinking, my God, this is the best, what you call, best GOTV I've ever seen. Okay, GOTV means go out to vote, okay. In an uh, in, in American campaign, I mean, they call it GOTV, you know. Here we are, you know, be in all this, they're going to get ambulance, la, go get wheelchair, they're going to get van, get people from kampong from here, you know, they carry, carry people up the stairs just to vote. These guys, nice and easy and cheap. Banglas, SMS, that's it. 90% people, 90% of the Chinese came out to vote. In Glangpata, the queue, the queue, uh, the human queue was two kilometers long. From 7.30 to, to, I think, 1 o'clock. They came out early to vote, okay? This is the best GOTV tactic I've ever seen. <laughs> it was, it was no, I mean, it's, it's brilliant. It was very, very good. So that's why I think this, this is going to be, you know, uh, what will GE 13 people remember for? The Bangla, bang, Bangla story will never, never go away. Now, is it a genuine cry? Uh, I mean, back, back to the seriousness of it. Is it really a genuine cry for uh, a change? Uh, I, think in, I think yes. I think even people who've actually voted for the BN uh, really, uh, uh, I, 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 I think this time around, they, they, they voted it very, very reluctantly too because they felt that, you know, whether it's, uh, whether you want uh, Ibra, uh, Anwar, whether it's Anwar or whether it's PAS, whether it's DAP, I think there needs to be a real uh, change in, in, in Malaysia and in the political system and I think the way things are, are, are run, uh, I, I, I I certainly believe there's a genuine uh, cry for, for change, rather than uh, Anwar Ibrahim's uh, uh, determination to, to, to become PM. I think he has become almost like a, a secondary reason why uh, people want change. Uh, certainly, unprecedented level of hatred and intimidation was used during uh, the uh, campaign. Uh, it's amazing. I think very, I mean, even especially in the social media, any utterances and any comments that are actually even slightly pro-government will be bashed and you know whacked in like nobody's business. Okay, I mean it's, it's quite sad, and so it has become so divisive. The narrative has become those, so divisive in Malaysia. Uh, of course, you know it, it doesn't help uh, when the different parties you know uh, uh, play religious issues and racial issues. It, it is very divisive. Uh, social media, of course, very different from the, the mainstream. I mean, they're just opposite polls for, 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 for obvious reasons. And I think uh, 13 general uh, elections also will be you know, remembered for the role that the NGOs and civil society is playing within the uh, political system. Next, please. Some unexpected outcomes. So I'm not prepared to say that it's uh, really, truly a Malaysian flash, uh, flash flood 
uh, as yet. Certainly a Chinese, uh, Chinese tsunami uh, with a bit of a Malay flash flood. Okay. Um, there is a widening gulf between the younger and the older Malays. Uh, is it a rejection of liberals in past? I, I put a question mark. I'm not, uh, I, I think at this point in time it's still uh, very cloudy, certainly f from my, you know, my viewpoint. Maybe perhaps uh, Rose will be able to shed some light on this. Uh, is there a, a, a true rejection of extremism by the middle class uh, uh, Malaysia? And, and it's very clear, it's very, very clear, uh, whatever Amno says, I think at the, both at the federal and state level, uh, civil service is definitely no longer a, a, a solid voter bank for, for Amno or, 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 or the BN. Next. Okay, certainly uh, other factors to consider going forward. What are the implications of a cabinet without, uh, without MCA and Gerakan in it? Uh, this dissatisfaction over the cabinet composition, a lot of it, interestingly, now it's coming from Sabah and Sarawak. They are definitely going to flex their muscles, just as the royal houses now uh, are going to uh, impose a, a greater, um, how do I call it, um, uh, authority, if you will, uh, over how things are going to be uh, run in, in the country, in, in the cabinet, and how decisions are being made. Uh, watch out for the kata phenomena, the uh, party hopping phenomena. Uh, let's, let's see how, you know, how things go. Uh, if you remember, Kaadelan had 31 seats and they ended up with 20, I think at the end, 26 or 20, 23 or 26. So uh, there's going to be a lot of that, uh, uh, that kind of uh, horse trading going on because of the slim margins in, in more seats now rather than less. Okay? Now, political reconfigurations, a lot of people would rubbish this. Oh, no, pass, especially when you speak to the Chinese uh, uh, urban, uh, urbanites, they'll say, no way, you know, even the Malays also don't want to have past extremist, uh, extremism. They don't want to have who do, they don't, uh, they, 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 they reject uh, Islamic State. Uh, my, later on, I will show you some polls. Uh, I, I think that could be contrary to uh, uh, what, what I, I, I believe the urbanites uh, are saying right now. So what the, the, the main thing to watch out for now is the UMNO general elections. Uh, not so much the MCA, but UMNO general elections and PASS will also be very uh, critical in, in, in deciding whether the, you know, the direction of the, the, the country is, is uh, 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 you know, is it going to be more ethnic based? Is it going to be more religious based? We will see. Next. Okay. Um, of course, a lot of people will ask as they will at Najib be challenged. Uh, certainly, I think weeks following the general elections, there was a lot of talk within AMNO, and I just uh, speaking to a few so-called uh, inner circle people, there was a lot of uh, criticism. I think there was a lot of blame game going on. Uh, some of it was also already played out in the blogs and who said what and who did what and who didn't do what and, and who failed and so on and so forth. So a lot of finger pointing and that still is continuing. But just to bear in mind, uh, 100,000 now, uh, instead of 2,000 delegates, you have a, you know, over 100,000 uh, voting delegates within AMNO. I'm not sure who has that kind of money to be able, be able to find it. <laughs> <laughs> by 100,000 votes. Uh, reporters, please don't quote me on this. Now, uh, as I said, you're not going to see a lot of, a very, you're not going to see a clear uh, policy direction until next year, whether it's going to be transformation on transformati, transformasi or transformati. Uh, and, uh, and of course, DAP with this contention over their uh, uh, party elections. I, I don't know how that is going to play out. Now, uh, Najib actually talked about uh, national reconciliation. Are the people ready for it? And what is the national reconciliation? A lot of party pot, uh, petitions, I think Rafizi have already said, and certainly the opposition of going out in the black uh, 505 rallies and so on to, to, to challenge the 27 seats that they think have not, have not been won uh, fairly. So we can expect more public demonstrations and more street demonstrations. Next. Okay, what is the post-GE uh, sentiment? As I said, there are a lot of universal concerns, of course, over corruption uh, and so on. And people, yes, there is a genuine cry for what we call change. But below the noise, 
always remember that the opposition has managed to garner a lot of the different concerns, agenda, uh, uh, anger, certainly a lot of anger amongst the different groups, but they all have different concerns. It's not just the one concern over corruption and uh, so on. And when I say NGOs, I also mean uh, you know, the, the Green Movement, the LGBTs, the women's groups, the church groups, even the religious groups all have actually opposing, in fact, they all <laughs> have opposing uh, 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 value systems and, and, and agendas and objectives. So they're not just one big happy family. It is, it is actually a lot of uh, different uh, groups wanting different, uh, different things. And a lot of the time it's actually uh, opposing rather than you know, uh, consolidating. Next. OK. Uh, we also did a series of polls uh, at, at the same time uh, on the 13th uh, to look at you know, uh, the possibility of a merger uh, we can, because we talked about the results the last time. In fact, when I was here, we talked about the possible uh, greater hegemony of AMNO or some sort of reconfiguration along the way, either AMNO and PAS or AMNO and Kaadilan or AMNO and uh, DAP even. Okay, let's have a look at uh, the the polls between uh, what we what, what we call a, a possible merger between AMNO and PAS. Are you agreeable to a merger, some sort of alliance or cooperation between AMNO and PAS? And you can see almost 70% of Malays say yes. So I think the issue of religion, the issue of ethnicity is still very much uh, 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 being discussed in the Malay community, that's not to be underestimated. But of course, there is a 30% who still want to have that check and balance. Okay, certainly 75% of them say no. But it's interesting to see that 20, 18% of Chinese say yes. So I'm like, okay. Uh, but I take, I think, majority of Chinese would not agree to a merger between PAS and AMNO. Okay, Indians also do not agree. What is interesting to us is that Bumiputra Islam, Muslims in Sabah and Sarawak, actually do want to see a merger between AMNO and PAS. So I find that, um, a, 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 I, I didn't see that. And I was also surprised during actually, during the elections, uh, in the interior of, I've always thought, I won't say I've always thought, I've, I've, I've always had the no notion that I think the Muslims in Sabah and Sarawak were actually very different from the ones in Peninsula. They were a lot more liberal, they were, because there was a lot of, inter I mean, there has been and have been a lot of intermarriages and, 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 and so on in Sabah and Sarawak. But I think religion has, is, actually is playing a greater role in Sabah and Sarawak. And, uh, and, within, and in, in the interior, it was surprising that there were actually a lot, certainly a lot more past flags okay, in the Bumiputra is, uh, uh, Muslim areas. So it is not, again, this is a force not to be underestimated in Sabah and Sarawak. And as Rita was saying, it's a three-legged stool. It's not just winning over the Malays. Uh, it's not enough just winning over the Malays, but you really have to look into Sabah and Sarawak, which has a completely different uh, ethnic composition and religious composition. Okay, next. Okay. Are you agreeable? Now looking at the, uh, cutting the same data, uh, again, surprisingly, 80% uh, of the females actually feel very strongly that there should be a merger uh, between AMNO and, and PAS. And I think quite consistently, 60 to 70% 60, 60 of Malays across the board, whether they're young or old, actually do want to see a merger. So it's actually not uh, an older Malay thing or a younger Malay thing. Uh, it is, I, I think ethnicity and religion is playing a bigger role, much bigger role now, I think, within the Malay community going forward. Maybe, and it, what I'm trying to say, it has never gone away. Okay, and it's, never, and, and it's not gonna go away soon, the way I see it, because I can see that even the younger Malays also are very concerned over this issue. Okay, next. Okay, as I said, uh, also across the board with Bumiputra, Muslims in Sabah and Sarawak, same thing. 
navigate the consolidation, whether it's a, a religious unity or it's ethnic unit, unity, it's something that is still in the minds of the community. And this one for me is surprising. I think Malays in, in, in Peninsula, I, 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 that, that one is almost a, a kind of a given, but Muslims in Sabah and Sarawak, for me, this is a, 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 a a groundbreaking uh, information, a piece of information for me as a researcher. Next. Are you agreeable with a merger, alliance, or cooperation between AMNO and PKR? I think, again, an, uh, a no, a clear no. Yes to pass, but, but not with Gardelan. Next. DAP, of course, overwhelmingly is no. I mean, Chinese also no, Indians. Are, so you're not going to see a merger between AMNO and, uh, and DAP very soon. And I don't think there's going to be any outreach in that, in that sense. I think the, the, the natural alliance, if at all it happens, really clearly is, within, um, is, is between AMNO and, and PAS. Next. Okay, so is it a Malaysian tsunami or is it a, a, a Chinese tsunami? What we, so we've come to a compromise, it's a Chinese tsunami but a Malay flash flood. Okay. <laughs> well, you cannot say that the Malays are, it was a Malay tsunami. I mean, if, if it's a Malay tsunami, I think uh, BN would have really you know, lost, uh, lost the, the, the day. But uh, certainly the Malay flash flood is something that the, the, the BN and certainly AMNO um, really has to look, they really seriously have to look into how they're going to regain their ground on the Malay side. Next, I think that's about it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wei. And thank you, Rita. Um, right, we have just about an hour. I'm sure there are lots of questions. Uh, so please keep your questions short. Um, introduce yourself very quickly and uh, go straight to the question. Um, who goes first? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, hi. My name is Lam Chi Chung. I'm a partner in a private equity firm, Axiom Asia. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, you know, the, the, given the great, the, the, a lot of the, 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 the um, uh, BN lost the popular vote, uh, but won uh, overall. And a lot of that has to do with the disparity in terms of the size of uh, constituencies, rural and urban. Do you, can you talk a bit about, uh, do, do you, how do you think this, will, will there be any development, you know, pressure to equalize, you know, these constituencies? Uh, my other question is with regards to Indians, um, can you maybe talk a bit about uh, why they would vote differently from the Chinese? Because they too would uh, also suffer from, uh, you know, the uh, issues of not being Bumiputra and all that. So why is their vote uh, uh, closer to the Malay vote rather than to the Chinese vote? Thanks. Uh, we'll, we'll take a few questions, I think. Sir, please. Good morning, and thank you for your statistics and analysis. I have one question for each. Uh, my name is Jim Tejan, by the way. Uh, Rita, I may have missed this statistic, but um, regarding your slide of percentage of seats in Peninsula Malaysia and Sabah Sarawak, you had 75%, uh, 166 seats in the peninsula, and 25%, 56 in Sabah and Sarawak. Uh, could you break that down by the uh, voting population in Peninsula? in Sabah, Sarawak, and, you know, is it, is it balanced? Uh, is there the numbers balanced? It probably swings way in favor, I would guess, of Sabah, Sarawak, and also the demographics, whether they be Chinese, BI, or BBI. Uh, Ms. Fui, if I may, uh, there's reportedly about 400,000 Malaysians in Singapore, although I think that number's high. I was wondering uh, how many of those are actually voting uh, Malaysians, and why did the government, why do you think the government required them to go back to Malaysia to vote rather than being able to vote absentee? Did they do the same thing for the Malaysians in Thailand? Thank you. Yeah, we take those two questions first, I think. Rita, you want to go first? Mr. Lam, your question was mainly on the um, uh, whether there will be uh, another delineation exercise uh, uh, in in Malaysia. Okay, 
the delineation exercise must now happen. I think uh, what you've seen is that in some voting areas like Sapute, there was like, uh, like 80,000 voters uh, in an, an area and that's one seat. And then there are areas uh, that had only like in Putrajaya, 15,000 voters, another seat. Uh. Uh, the delineation exercise um, will will take place. Uh, uh, that uh, one of the one of the reasons that BN is so insistent on, and they wanted to focus on getting two thirds, is that if they had two thirds majority, they would have gone forward with the delineation uh, without much argument. But now you have to go through Parliament to look through the whole uh, delineation uh, exercise, and there will be quite a lot of fight over it, uh, you know, how you delineate. But it will happen because it's already eight years since the last exercise, I believe. Uh, it, they are working towards, like, uh, there will be more, I think going forward to GE14, uh, there will, should be more than 222 parliamentary seats to be uh, contested because some of the constituents are really big, you know, like in, even like in Galang Pata. But when this happens, uh, you must remember that even the Felda areas uh, would be reconfigured. Uh, so will they end up being having more Malay majority votes as well? So it's going to be interesting. Yeah? It cuts both ways, okay. And uh, I mean, people term it gerrymandering, but anyway, we will watch this uh, and to see uh, what's going to happen. But that exercise of uh, delineation will happen, okay. Uh, the other uh, question that you had was that uh, yes, uh, go ahead. Okay, yeah. I'll, I'll take the others. Uh, talking about the equalization of areas, uh, as Rita says, it, it can cut uh, both ways. Uh, simply because in Sabah and Sarawak, for example, uh, although the areas are much bigger, but then they also, uh, they don't have that kind of population, but their argument is that they have a much bigger uh, 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 land size. Right. Okay. The area of Kalabakan itself is, is one constituency is even the bigger than the state of Pahang. For example, you know, uh, so th there will be a lot of arguments if if you if you if you go that get, go that way to say that okay, it's only based on on population, but it's also the land size and the resources that uh, the resources and the wealth that uh, Sabah and Sarawak is bringing in. So it, it, it can it can cut both ways. I mean, if it is not just about the urban areas. So this is definitely the space to watch, uh, simply because, as I said, uh, there's a lot of contestation uh, in terms of uh, petitions. You know how uh, on on some of the seats, the the, the polls, and also how uh, the delineation, if at all, is going to come up, is going to be a very very heated debate. So it can it, it can go one way or or, or the other. Now, as far as Indian uh, voters are concerned, why are they not voting the same way as the Chinese? Number one, you don't have a very sing uh, you don't have a single uh, a powerful uh, 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 Indian, if you like, uh, opposition party. Okay, that's that's one. You know, although you know MIC and all that also has the same problems, if, if not worse than the MCA. But you don't have a single uh, opposing force that actually rep can represent the China, uh, the Indian community. And I think the the Indian community, if if you like, they've always worked. I think uh, even in the past, worked closer with the Malay community than. Than, than with the Chinese community. I think I, I don't think very many Chinese firms or uh, Chinese employers uh, actually do uh, uh, hire uh, Indians at the at, 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 at the very high and you know at the higher level. So I think the affiliation in terms, of, I think even the lifestyle and so on, uh, you you always see that you know the Indian community is always near uh, is always close has always been closer uh, to, for historical reasons always been closer to the Malays than the Chinese. Now, in terms of uh, demographics, I think your, your, your question on demographics of uh, Sabah and Sarawak, I think I've answered that. Basically, uh, it, it's land size versus uh, uh, population. So, uh, what, uh, again, do you, it, it, does that answer uh, Jim, your question? Uh, I Sorry? think if you look at these numbers here uh, on this slide, right, <laughs> you would see that the, in Peninsular Malaysia, the total vote casted was about 6.8 million. And then in Sabah and Sarawak, it's... Um, no, 2013. Sorry, in the 2013 figures, you see that for uh, Peninsular Malaysia, it's 9.5 million vote casted. And uh, for Sabah, Labuan, and, and Sarawak, if you added that up, it's about 1.5 million votes. So, you know, it's, it's smaller. 
in terms of the actual population uh, demographics, but they only have 25% of that seat, which is also very important because it's 56. And this 56 seats, uh, I believe, uh, was part of that 20 point uh, when Sabah and Sarawak came in yes. to join Malaysia. In 1963, yeah. sure. In 1963. But yeah. I, I think m perhaps, I'm not sure, with, with the percentages that mm. they, they get a lot more bang for their buck. Uh, mm. That's why they're demanding that's why they're demanding, they're demanding more so representation much, uh, yeah, now. More representation now. So th as I said, you know, if you want to delineate, it can cut both ways. You can cut Saputi into four seats, say for example, Glangpata into four seats. But I think the same argument could go into some of the areas in Sabah and Sarawak as well. You mm. see, mm. Uh, but the fact especially that now that they, that, that is why they they are the ones. Uh, they, in fact, the the, the uh, Sabah and Sarawak based parties are the ones that are actually making the most noise in cabinet mm. right now. But then, graphically, the fact that I'm no one most of the seats, uh, the more or less fixed deposit in Sabah and Sarawak, but the majority of the population is non-Malay. And uh, I think, is that not correct? In Sabah and Sarawak? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the voter, yeah. voting Yes, yes, yes. In Sabah and Sarawak, that's why we split it up to Bumi Putra Tra Islam and, and yeah. Dovitara Bukan no, Islam now. Yeah. Hmm. But if you, if you look at this slide, it's also very, uh, it's very interesting because the Sabah and Sarawak parties are like the PBPs and the SUPPs and the, you know, these, they, 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 like PBP <coughs> in, Sarawak, in Sarawak, right, type. It's going to be very interesting because there's going to be a state election soon. I mean, soon meaning two and a half years down the road for, <laughs> for Sarawak. How long can type hold on? Will he, uh, what happens post type? I think that's quite yep. going to be quite interesting. He can bring in 14 of the, he win every single seat uh, with 200, only about 230 voters, you know. <laughs> okay, so, so Sabah and Sarawak is also a place to watch. And Sabah and Sarawak will be a place that, I mean, I'm sure that Pakatan Raya will have to focus some energy in how to go about it, go there. But it's actually very difficult to reach, you know. In some areas, it's so remote, right? Even um, they, uh, on voting day, the po polling station closed at 11 a.m. They just went, finished, and then that's it. But it was so deep into the, in the interiors. So reaching them is also going to be uh, interesting. Uh. Mm. Okay. okay, next question. Back there, yes. Good morning. My name is Wong Sichun. Um, can I just throw a hypothetical question, right? Because given the, the problems or rather the things faced by the Chinese, the dis dissatisfaction faced by the Chinese is that it's inequality in a lot of areas. <clears throat> now, given Chinese being a minority of about 30%, even if Kadan comes in, right, will they be able to get what they want? the equality part, will the Malays actually give in to the demand of the Chinese to be equal? Even the, the issue of a Chinese Prime Minister or non-Malay Prime Minister is an, an issue. Thank you. Hi, I'm Pat Patrick Spong from Drain APR. How, how did uh, BN win back uh, KEDA? Uh, because that was quite interesting. Uh, how big were there a lot of projects? And uh, how big uh, um, was Mahathir's son? I think I think he's the new chief minister, and was uh, the former prime minister Mahathir very active in supporting? And and how big is this Mahath? If he if he is a major factor, then is his standing within Amno sort of a big force now? And then possible uh, whether his son would be the next Amno um, leader? Thank you. Okay, shall we thank this too? Okay, uh, let me take the Kadar question first. Uh. It's quite interesting. Be one of the reasons that BN actually won back Kadar was because PAS didn't do very well as a government there. Okay, they were actually not running the state very well. Okay, that was the first point. The second thing was that uh, what had happened was that during the election time, no, uh, Mukris actually made a very early move into Kadar. I think they, he, they, he started his work maybe about two years before the elections, two or three years behind, um, and worked very, very hard on the ground. It wasn't just about projects. I mean, he worked in the, uh, in the whole area. And during the time of the campaign, uh, Tun Mahathir spent a lot of time campaigning for his son there as well. 
Now, Mukris was not without uh, problems uh, in Kedah. What had happened also in Kedah was that the, there was a guy in Amno that was waiting 15 years uh, to be Menteri Besar. And he was very upset that, he, that Mukris was coming. So there was actually internal sabotage. On the day, Mukris Mahathir actually had to go into another car because there were Amno uh, enemies of his uh, that blocked his own car going into the polling station, you know. To, to nom for nomination. So he was taken by another route in a, another car. Was that correct, uh, Rose? Yeah. So there were also a lot of, there were a lot of, some of the seats uh, that you see in, uh, in the elections that had been lost uh, also had internal sabotage, you know, and selection of candidates and so on, right, uh, had uh, contributed to the, the results uh, of the uh, GE as well. So uh, actually, in Kedah, if I would say that it's actually what PASS did not do that allowed BN to win back uh, Kedah. Yeah. PASS was split. Yeah, PASS was also very, very split in uh, Kedah. So the, whilst AMNO has their, and uh, BN component parties have their problems, the opposition parties also internally would have their own struggles, uh, like, like every uh, party. Okay, on the, on the dissatisfaction faced by the Chinese, uh, Actually, this is um, it's quite an interesting uh, question because um, the there when we did the polls, there was also a perception that the Malays felt that they um, that the Chinese were given too much. So there's a huge perception gap uh, because Malay community and other communities don't see that they are actually poor Chinese or. Chinese that are disadvantaged. They think that every Chinese is like the nine A's, um, you know, the, the rich ones and the ones that are getting the projects and all because they are very visible. Okay, but there is a class of Chinese that is very is suffering quite a lot in Malaysia. And if I shared with you one statistics, you will probably get a shock. I looked at the statistics of one thousand people who committed suicide. Okay, and forty five percent of that one thousand were Chinese. Okay, and it was very interesting because Chinese who today live in urban areas are also very financially st uh, stretched. They are the ones that have are also borrowing very heavily, you know, with the, through the alongs. So it's it's quite problematic. So, the, the, but there's a huge perception gap between how the Malay and Indian communities actually see the uh, the the Chinese community and the perception. And they felt that, now, it was very interesting, the Malays were also very upset this time with BN, but because they were uh, more upset with the fact that they didn't want uh, uh, DAP and um, uh, DAP or Adilan coming into power, they were forced to make this decision of voting for BN, which they actually did not want to, you see. So the reasons are slightly, it's a little bit uh, different, you know. And uh, going forward is going to be very interesting and you raise a very important issue because you have been hearing the overtones of saying things like uh, with Muhyiddin saying we have to reward the, or support the communities that supported us. So what does that mean? I don't think anybody will outwardly say that you, know, um, you can't be equal but what will happen is if you may not get the priority. Uh, you know, if, there are, if there are campaigns or things or programs going around or transformation programs, you, uh, you would maybe be at the bottom of the pile. But I like to think that we should move away from this, with this eth ethnicity, because a lot of it is also a process of urbanization. What the Malay urban population is su suffering is still suffered by the Chinese population, because there's no such thing as if there's a flood, you're only flooding the Malay f road and not the Chinese road. It doesn't work like that, right? So there are lots of these kind of like social is issues that are masking that uh, uh, people use race and eth ethnicity, uh, but there are a lot of social issues uh, that are shared commonly, you know. So I think going forward in Malaysia is the transformation is you must remember that a lot of the agencies and the ministries uh, started in rural development. And now Malaysia has urbanized uh, with 60-70% of the population in urban cities. 
but the ministries are not able to cope uh, with this transformation that you know that this change that has uh, happened you see i give you a good example in a rural area when you are actually uh, carving out or building a certain number of population immediately you will have a uh, for how many number of people you will have a police station but now when new urban centers are being built uh, you know there's no planning for actually a police post in some new housing estates you know so this has become very uh, problematic i don't think that because it's very complex in malaysia um the the chinese have definitely now said that i really want this change now whether when the change happens uh they would um uh, they would sort of like feel that they would have equal status uh, is left to be seen uh, actually because on the other side for pas and keadilan they still also have to win over malay votes okay and what will they do what sort of language uh, will they use uh, to uh, get back to get more support from the malay and the indian communities they have the the support from the uh, chinese community but what about how are they going to, what language will they use uh, to get back the support from to get more support from the malay and indian community to tip the balance rose i think maybe you would like to add to this because i think it's a very important point uh the malay and chinese uh, they miss they sort of like the miscommunication and that what they don't understand about each other up to now you know after 55 years uh rose yeah mm. oh okay uh, i i think rita has said um um almost all of it what i what i wanted to add was this <clears throat> Uh, you know, there there are a lot of people asking uh, in Malaysia today, uh, um, non-Malays asking me uh, whether Utusan <clears throat> actually represents uh, the Malays, or is it just do they just represent the 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 ultra Malays? You know, those who are a bit more uh, um, uh, extreme in their views, yeah, uh, about uh, the the importance of the the Malay or the. Uh, a priority that needs to be given, the special privileges that should be given to the Malays, should that be protected? Um, the kind of answer that I'm getting back, because I, I, I kept doing this, you know, I kept asking around, and and and, and the information that I that I've received, it's not so much a statistical base; it's more anecdotal, you know, the the, the comments, the things that I've that I've read. Yeah, um, what I'm hearing is that there's a there's a big bunch out there who are actually uh, looking to Utusan and who, uh, who, are, who feel that Utusan actually represents them. And, and um, I, I'm one of those Malays that, or that worry about this, but there's a whole bunch out there who are professional, who are upper middle class, middle class, you know, who, um, who are very very concerned, you know, about um, uh, the way the Chinese voted. Uh, they are angry. They are very angry with uh, uh, with uh, Barisan. They are very angry with um, uh, the uh, so-called Malay elites that are connected and how rich they are. Because I keep hearing about, you know, uh, one minister's son driving a Hummer, uh, political secretaries who, uh, you know, drive por Porsches and things like that. I hear that, you know, and, and I, I know that if they had a choice, they would not have, uh, uh, for instance, voted for, um, for, for the Barisan. But what exactly are their concerns? What I'm hearing is that they don't want, the question just now was, the question that was asked was, um, will the Malays give in to demands to be equal? If you read Utusan, if you listen to the voices and the people that I've been listening to, no, the Malays will not give in to this demand. This is what I'm hearing. It, it's, it's, um, it's problematic. And if, you know, and, and many of them voted for BN, as Rita pointed out, not because they, 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 uh, they support the BN, but because they didn't want Lim Kit Siang, they didn't want uh, Guan Ing, and they didn't want Anwar Ibrahim to, to give up the rights that they feel have always been theirs. 
I don't know whether that answers it, but that's the yeah, kind I of just, I just conversation, want to... the discussions, the, the feelings that, you know, that um, I'm, I'm noticing. I think, I think the question of a Chinese Prime Minister, uh, I, I think we have to go back to the Constitution. I think to, and, and, it, and it's, it, it, it is surprising for me, maybe it shouldn't be surprising for me. Uh, I remember we ran the polls in um, running up to the GE in Glangpata uh, on Kitsiang, and I think as high as something like 40 to 45 percent, especially young Chinese who are working in Singapore actually truly believed that Kixiang could be the Menteri Besar of Johor. I mean, that is, shows the ignorance uh, and, 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 you know, that the lack of understanding of the Malaysian constitution and the royal houses, and I think that is in a way reflected in what, what uh, 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 you know, Rose is, is, is saying. Because people will go, you know, I mean, young people will say, yeah, 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 you know, I mean, his son can run Penang, why the father cannot run uh, Johor? So I think that that mis, uh, you know, I, I think just uh, just to share with you, you know, the, the kind of the, the perception ga uh, gap and the information gap and the lack of understanding of constitutional uh, uh, rights, if you like, uh, and on one hand, and also the 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 communicate uh, the 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 communicate uh, uh, the, com the communication, I think, between the the, the various communities also uh, is very wide. But the, the, the brilliance of uh, An Anwar Ibrahim, I, I, and I give it and I give it to, to, to him is that uh, he has managed to bridge all this. Uh, if you want to go back, um, hey, where's Rita? Oh, okay. If you if you, if you if you remember my slide on that that house, you know, the above the noise and below the noise. That's exactly what I mean. Uh, yeah, go down. Oh, okay, okay. No, no, no. Okay, up, 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 up. Slowly up. There, there you go. Okay, so this is this is if if you will, this answers your question. Okay, thanks. Right, she's back. <laughs> yes, Beth. Um, I wonder if you can tell us something about the impact of the elections on the on Amno itself, or on the politics and the, the leadership issues, um, especially whether Najib is in any danger in the forthcoming Amno. You know? Mm -hmm. One or two more questions? Yes, miss. I'm Po Kwan from ST Foreign Desk. Um, if we look at the number of seats won by the parties within the opposition coalition, it will appear to me that PKR is the worst player among the three. But based on the slides that uh, our researchers shown, uh, it seems like it has won the biggest jump in terms of popular votes, you know, uh, since its founding some 10 years ago, and it's got the shortest history among the three parties. So what are some of the reasons that could have contributed to that? And also another question is on the global witness video. I mean, we would have thought that the video is damaging enough, you know, to do a huge blow to Barista National, but it turned out that PBB still score, you know, straight A's, you know, it's got all the seats that it's contested. So why the reason for that? Yeah. Right. Thank you. Um, okay. I have one question in the back, should we add that in? There's a button in the middle somewhere. Hi, good morning, um, Benjamin. Uh, in five years ago, uh, Anwar Ibrahim famously attempted but failed to take over parliament through party hopping. So what do you also take on this occurring again? Thank you. Okay. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll take the... Yeah. Okay, on PKR, uh, in fact, it came, uh, came in with 30 sheets. Uh, um, actually, PASS was the one that actually has done the worst, uh, not Ka'adelan. Uh, the reason for the highest uh, the jump in votes is because uh, Ka'adelan actually contested uh, in a lot of the mixed seats. So a lot of it actually was won in Selangor and uh, Perak and Penang on the back of young, Malay, uh, young urban Malay vote, votes and also Chinese votes in the mixed seats. Okay, that's, that's, that's one. And the video on type, uh, yes, 
I, I, I agree with you. You know, you, they come with, with something as damaging as this, you know, you can come back with straight A's. But then the same thing can be said about Anwar with this, all these pictures of him with other men or women or whatever. It, it just doesn't stick. So this is, this is called Teflon politics of Malaysia. It just doesn't stick, you know. And, um, and that also shows you how difficult it is to make inroads in Sarawak simply because of the terrain and also, uh, as I said, both sides of the of the divide, money politics still work in Sabah and Sarawak in a big way. Uh, on uh, party hopping by Anwar, I think that probably uh, just to um, I, I, I think BN would have probably learned their lesson very well already. I think they would have plugged that hole somewhere. So I don't think that's going to happen. In fact, I think it's more the other way around. Um, on the question of the impact of the elections on uh, on AMNO and, and and whether Najib is in danger, you see, it's actually kind of quite mixed at the moment because uh, I, it's now building up already to the November uh, elections. Uh, there's first of all, there was quite a lot of anger within AMNO. And there was a lot of like finger pointing, and then why is it? And they were all looking for somebody to blame. Uh. But Amno did come back with ten seats more than they did in 2008. I think that, to be absolutely honest, if Najid had not been the one that had taken the lead, uh, I think maybe this time, uh, um, because he changed the way that uh, they went forward to the elections, he used a very presidential style election technique this time, um, and. That's why when he came out with 133 uh, seats, right, there were people within the traditionalists and the conservatives said that your, your um, presidential style type of election campaign did not really uh, work. Uh, but our observation is that if he had not used that style uh, and his, his leadership going forward, I think BN could have done a lot worse. Now, th after the results, there is still talk on the ground that um, within the party, oh, certainly there is, um, um, he has to go. Uh, then after that, you probe further, they said, so who will be the next uh, AMNO leader? Uh, not really sure. I don't think we have a choice. So there's kind of like mixed views. And there, the AMNO youth has already come forward to say that there should not be a contest for the top two positions within AMNO. So as far as we see at the moment, it's still, um, it's still in progress. Uh, it's being played out at the moment, but the general elections may be over for us, but I don't think the general elections are, the elections is actually over for Najib. I think fighting the AMNO battle uh, is probably just as hard or harder, okay? And now with the new type of, uh, with 100,000 delegates uh, going in to vote, uh, who knows? And whether there will be delegates that will, people who will nominate uh, uh, new people who just to embarrass Najib, and also at this moment, Tunku Razali has started to go round, you know, and he's gone to East Malaysia now to s s try to rally some support for himself. So is it actually round two, uh, uh, Razali versus Najib? But Najib is really the one defect. Is really in Razali versus Tun Mahathir again, you know, of uh, round two. So, so it's, it's going to be quite interesting. It's, it's still w working. And the AMNO forces are, um, let's put it this way, uh, Malay politics is very, very vicious. I mean, we, it, it can, it's extremely vicious. And we only sort of like notice it on what we read and, and, and uh, what the eye can see. But actually what goes below it is very, very deep. And even as a political observer, I've... Uh, I have trouble with this. <laughs> As a Malaysian political observer for so many years, I have trouble with observing Malaysian, Malay politics. Perhaps, uh, Rose, you would like to add, yeah, add to this? It's mm. one more thing. Yeah? Um, there is a talk that um, um, you know, uh, Najib gave in too much to the Chinese because he bent backwards uh, you know, uh, and the Chinese essentially screwed him yeah, in the end by <laughs> voting for uh, Pakatan. <clears throat> so because of that, um, there is some discussion that um, the Malays are wanting a, a more Mahade kind of approach to, to um, running the show. And the person that would be better able to do that, um, some of them are saying, is Muidin. 
uh, Muhyiddin uh, clearly is, um, uh, you know, will focus more on the Malays, take care of them, uh, uh, and uh, and then he will also know uh, how to put the Chinese back in their place. That that's the discussion, uh, because um, as I was telling my colleagues. The, the proverb that I keep hearing now is this, and I, I don't know how many of you know Bahasa, but it's, it's this. Uh, Kera di hutan, disusukan, uh, anak di pangkuan, mati kelaparan. Which means, you know, you go out there, this is what Najib did, you know, you go and help all these Chinese who don't really need, uh, need help. Uh, but uh, the Malays, you know, uh, whom you are supposed to also represent and take care of, you've not bothered about them. Um, I'm hearing a lot more of that. So I, I think just to add to that, you see, so if you, uh, you were a politician, you need to get back votes, and if you were UMNO, where would you focus? Young Malay urban voters, correct? And so you give that that priority. I mean, they don't say it, but subtly, and Sabah and Sarawak. So you would shift your your strategy this way, and that will be very... And so what will happen to the other communities? I guess that they don't... Uh, they won't be priority, but where would the priority be to be getting back Malay, young Malay urban voters? Okay, so right. that's a kind of like an indirect way of asking the question, uh, answering the question, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you. James, you have a question? Uh, thank you very much, Rita, yeah. and for a very interesting presentation. Um, I've noticed that you you try not to mention very much about the other component parties of the Barisan National, in particular the Chinese component parties. It's quite clear that uh, what you said that uh, because it was such a strong vote for the uh, DAP, basically the Chinese vote for the Chinese component parties like MCA Gerakan collapsed. So I'm just wondering, uh, uh, given this situation, who do you see as the emerging uh, new leadership that will appear, say, in SUPP, Gerakan and MCA, because all of them will be holding, uh, well, Gerakan and MCA will be holding the party elections this year, uh, uh, SUPP will probably hold it uh, early next year. I'm just wondering who do you think will be the emerging leadership, uh, given that, you know, these parties have basically uh, lost uh, the bulk of their political legitimacy uh, for all these years, saying that they are the Chinese voice in the ruling coalition. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I, I think... Uh, um, can, uh, I, sorry, can I yeah. add the question here? Yeah? Yeah, I think I'll, I'll take the opportunity to ask one or two questions and have a comment as well. Um, uh, Ms. Hui, you talked a lot about the, the sentiments, right? Uh, you, you talked about unprecedented hatred and things like that. So I, I, my comment is that uh, you did mention the brain drain, but as an economic problem in that context, I would, my comment would be that the brain drain actually as, is, shouldn't just be seen as an economic issue. It's, it hides a lot of family tragedies. Uh, we are talking about families breaking up because they have their sons and daughters have to leave. So if you're talking about sentiments in the voting situation, I think uh, the brain drain is not a technical issue. It's a very, very sentimental one. Uh, my questions, one, one to read them. Um, you talked about Kelantan and how the popular vote is now about 10% between BN and PR. About, about that, yes. Um, I would like to uh, compare that to, say, Trangano, yeah. where the popular vote difference is actually 3%. Yes. Right. So if we look at and mm. some of other states as well, so we are seeing that at the state level, mm. and, and if we use the popular vote, mm. the difference is not great in many of these mm. states, mm. right? Mm. So, the, so the conclusion that Kelantan is somehow being lost to the to pass might, might be a bit too, too hasty. Perhaps because I, I'm seeing that there's a polarization that, and in all, in many of the states, you're coming closer to mm, a 50-50. Mm, 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 mm. um, so that Kelant the the one in Kelantan as well is is you know uh, becoming smaller okay. than make makes sense, except of course for for Penang and Selangor, which are quite and, and Kuala Lumpur, which are which are quite definitely in the PR camp. Um, if you could comment a bit on that. Uh, my last question is: uh, I wonder about the effect of. BN money politics in West Malaysia. Uh, Ms. Wu, you mentioned something about East Malaysia. I wonder what the effect w effects were in West Malaysia, especially if we consider many of the One Malaysia measures like BRIM and all that as being part of the campaigning by, by BN. Um, mm -hmm. 
from what we can see, the, the effects don't seem to have gone very far, despite the cost. Uh, uh, if you could say something about that. Thank you. I'll take yeah, the, um, the, the questions first, uh, simply because James touched on my f favorite topic, which is the component Chinese parties. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, I think as far as the, you know, you got to look at it. I, I, are you asking the question from a viewpoint of a, uh, a member, a, a, an MCA member or a BN uh, component party member or a, a Chinese, the Chinese public uh, at large? Now, as far as the Chinese community at large is concerned, uh, I, I think it just really doesn't really matter who is going to be the leader because they're just, uh, they have actually been, been rendered irrelevant as in, in, in the polls. And people have asked me, you know, how long is it going to be? Uh, 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 how long will it take? You know, how long will it take for MCA and Gerakan and, and, and all these parties to recover? I think it could even take a generation you know, I mean, DAP, I mean, if you look at DAP, they certainly very have been very, very successful in 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 in, in the last two uh, GEs. But that didn't come easy. I mean, it took them 30, 40 years as well. So I, I think there are a lot of issues that uh, the Chinese component parties, and there's still a long way to go uh, for them to be able to. Uh, uh, um, uh, I, I I'm not sure if they're going to ever. Uh, regain the 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 past uh, glories the same same way and, and until and unless until and unless uh, there are real major changes in within the Malay uh, community because that that's just going to be the component that is going to be a lot more dominant Sabah Sarawak and the and and the young Malays that are coming to going to be the future leaders of this country. Uh, I think uh, just going back, I'll I'll leave the Kelantan uh, question to 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 Rita. But going back to money politics in BN, and it's very interesting that you talked about uh, BRIM, uh, the 1MDB, and so on. Okay, in, um, that is where, um, I, I think to say that, it, actually we did, uh, we did the surveys for, for, for BRIM, actually in all the states. We had the database of all the recipients and we did a poll uh, on the uh, BRIM recipients, and it was actually very clear uh, surprisingly, even uh, a lot of the other programs like for Nade Kase and so on, we, we, we were actually asked, we were commissioned to do polls on, on, on those things. And this is uh, part of what you call the micro-targeting. And then this kind of techniques are also used in, in, in the states where you actually micro-target uh, voters at the marginal seats uh, where it, it matters. And actually it does work. It did work for the Malay community. It did work for the Indian community. But, but I suppose this shouldn't be surprising. Uh, and I'll show a little bit of the data with you as in Saramban, for example. Uh, uh, the polls that we did on the BRIM recipients, only 10% 10, 10 of the recipients, Chinese recipients, actually supported the Barisan. Whereas 70 to 80 percent of the Malays who actually were recipients of the BRIM uh, supported the the the, the Barisan. so to say that it doesn't work, I think uh, I, I think it does. This is part of the micro targeting, but I think different ethnic groups have different uh, support levels. Uh, same with the one MDB programs and and, and so on. Uh, yeah, I, I think the, the I agree with you. The brain drain is not just an economic issue, which is why it was easy enough to be able to garner the, to, to just, I think, uh, 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 the anger that came in, a lot of it is because families were broken up and, you know, and, and people having to leave their homes and, and so on. And they were angry enough, angry enough to come back, pay for an airfare ticket to come back just to vote against the government. And someone, when someone loves you, they may not vote for you, but when someone's really, really angry with you, they'll make sure they come back and vote against you. That's why I say voting is not about the head, it's a lot about the, the heart. Yeah. Uh, okay, Kibing, I'll take the question on Drunganu first. Uh, what was very interesting in Drunganu was that uh, um, there were, the results came out as close as that in Drunganu was simply because it was a protest uh, against, the, there were 10 of Idris Yusuf, the previous uh, Menteri Basas people, they were completely dropped. So there was a lot of anger with that. So a lot of it was internal, was very angry with uh, the, the current Men Menteri Basar, and that's why they vote, the results came out uh, closely. It, it's not because that 
because past is also very split in Trungganu, and Hadi Awang kind of has really lost steam. All right, there's a, there's some sort of a silent civil service revolt uh, uh, within uh, Trungganu uh, that if in fact if Trungganu had been lost this time, it was because of what um, Amno has been doing or not doing there. There was a lot of in infighting, and there's also a lot of quiet anger. Uh, against the royalties because of the the civil service were aware of the scale uh, of some of the spending of building all these palaces and all that uh, that is angering the civil servants uh, and the Trungganu people so it's a little bit more complex than just a past amno thing there's a lot of like intra in intra polit uh, party rivalries within amno and um and uh, anger with the Trungganu civil service. Uh, Rose, would you like to add to what we did in Trungganu? You, you go, any, any points that you'd like to add? So that was also partly the problem. So it should not be, that one keeping could not be really read as if the, the, the past support is uh, increasing. Is There's a lot of anger against Amno and a lot of Malays who actually voted against uh, Amno because they were not um, happy that they were being dropped, you know. A, b a big portion was that. And in Kelantan, it's very interesting. You see, one of the political parties, uh, if you talk about MCA or Garaka, one of the political parties that really have to go through some soul searching would be PASS, you know. Because after Nick Aziz and after Hadi Awang, uh, what would happen? I think Rose can, uh, will, will add to that comment. But if you look at the Kelantan figures, uh, you see Kelantan has been in PASS's hands for more than 18 years. And within the local Kelantan community, you know, as long as Nick Aziz is there, we're happy to, uh, you know, to still keep him there out of respect. But Kelantan has deteriorated such a lot uh, uh, as, a, you know, in the cities. A lot of the local Kelantanese already beginning to resonate uh, with, uh, with BN. That's why you see that it's coming, it's a little coming a bit close, all right, between the BN and Paso. Post Nick Aziz, uh, what would happen. But the interesting thing about Kelantan is that a lot of Kelantanese actually work in uh, Johor, in Selangor and all that, the younger ones. And then when they go back to vote, they're quite happy to say, oh, because they get a lot of the urban things and then they go back and influence their parents and they themselves will vote against BN. So that's why it makes it very difficult for BN to actually take back Kelantan. So it is also another state to, to watch. Actually, going forward in Malaysian politics is not looking at the Chinese, it's looking at how fragmented now and what the Malays are going to do that is critical and is in East Malaysia. Because that would be, that is going to drive uh, a lot of the politics uh, going forward. Um, Rose, would you like to add to that? Yeah. So that, that's my take. Yeah. What, what was the other question? Oh, MCA and Gerak Khan. I, I just like to comment about MCA. Um, I, I think a lot of you here will probably have some historical, um, uh, so you understand MCA from you know history. I, I think MCA actually first started out as everybody you know, not as a political party but as a social you know organization. Actually, what MCA has become today uh, is more like a corporation and not a political party. Okay, why do I say that? Because they own the star, they have proper, the, you know, they have uh, the Keta, Utah, and all that. So actually, the president of MCA is like a CEO of a corporation. It's not really, you know. So what they have also, they also have very uh, bad culture that has developed over time. But if you look at DAP, DAP is really like there is a, well, supposed to have a political ideology. Uh, all right, of a Malaysian Malaysia kind of thing, so it's very different in the way that it has been uh, configured. All right, and MCA could go back to become an NGO and just service the, um, the the Chinese community. But what is very interesting is that the fight that is going to in within MCA today is not over, not so much is the leadership about who is going to take over the assets, you know. So it's very different. So it's, it's changed in that kind of, in that context. Because after the Malaysian Communist Party, and Professor Wang would uh, know this 
I mean, he's the expert. There was a gap. Then the British encouraged a Chinese party to come up, and that became the uh, MCA. And then there were a lot of the, the, the combination of the three groups that formed MCA, and there were a lot of business groups and so on. But Chinese part, the Chinese community today is not all businessmen. They are all professionals, and they are also people who are poor. They are financially stressed. So they are not really representing or hearing the voices out there unless they, they, they can recon configure. But at the moment, they are looking like a big corporation because their asset value is more than $2 billion. So whatever that is going on in there is that people wanting to take party assets is as bad as that, okay? Should we sell out the star? Should we take this piece of land and all that? So it's gone away from what a political party should be. Although you need money, but still, okay. Um, as for Gerard Khan, um, oh well, what can I say? <laughs> but going forward, it will be interesting how things will, will reconfigure. But certainly, I don't think that the older political card parties can remain as they are because the voter and how people are thinking are very different today. Okay? Thank you. Right, last round of questions. One, two, and three. Yes. Yeah, Jim. Go ahead. Uh, Regarding the post-election rhetoric from Utusan, and perhaps Datin Rose would like to respond on this, will it backfire? Uh, good morning. My name is Albert Tai. I'm a political observer. Uh, I'm interested to know about the, the politics of past. You see, the, Pakatan, the future of Pakatan depends quite substantially on the position of past. Can you enlighten us on the... Uh, the likelihood of past continue with Pakatan riot, especially the conservative led by people like Harundin and uh, uh, the type Harun or Harun type, the conservative. And especially with the advanced age of Nick Aziz, post Nick Aziz, past could, have, could be on their own or even worse, could team up with Amno, and they will probably bring the future of Pakatan in jeopardy. So can you please enlighten us on the, the past politics? Thank you very much. Right. Um, someone at the back wanted, wanted to ask something. Yes. Hello, hi. Uh, I know that's quite a, uh, my name is Ying Zhang from MCI. I know that's quite a bit of buzz this time around in this uh, general elections on social media, especially on Facebook. Um, my question is, in your opinion, how much of this buzz actually translated into real votes uh, on May 5th? And what do you think is the impact on social media in this general election? Thank you. Okay, who we'll goes first? Uh, the question on... Um on Utusan, I think that was directed to to Datin. Uh, on the on the social media uh, buzz, as I said, uh, I, I think it had a huge impact, and it will be. I mean, I, I think this is undeniable, uh, especially amongst young uh, voters. As I said, you know, even the you, something as simple as the GOTV uh, go out to vote uh, campaign itself was actually largely based on uh, uh, simply a rumor that was you know passed uh, around you know through an SMS. I mean, uh, I think the the few days later, I think the PM actually came out to clarify. I mean, if you had you know shipped in forty thousand uh, Bangla in, you needed something like, uh, what was that, a hundred jumbo jets, you know, coming in. And there were just, uh, I, I, I think it, 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 it plays a, a huge impact. I mean, even the, the supposed blackout in Bentong, which didn't happen, I mean, it immediately, you know, about a thousand, a million, was that a million? A million people, you know, were asked to go and sign up to protest against the blackout, which really didn't uh, didn't happen, uh, and I, I think these sort of things. In, in fact, uh, I think you're going to have a, a, um, uh, a speaker that's coming later this week, and you can ask him how he lost the Malo. Basically, people just I think DAP what they did was that they went round, uh, they found this rubbish dump and dug three holes in there and said, look, you know, the Linus is going to dump the nuclear waste here. 
and everybody panicked. It was a sure uh, they were driven by the sense of fear uh, in in which they're living. But that also reflects to me a, a much deeper kind of uh, problem within the BN, which is you know they obviously suffer from a huge uh, credibility uh, issue uh, here. So I I, I think uh, 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 yes yeah social social media is something that you know it, it is an uneven I would say it's an uneven uh, 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 playing field for for the for the BN in 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 favor of the opposition this time you know so this is something that the BN has to to look into okay as to the future of uh, past you have right, rightly pointed out um, I think I want to go back to the uh, slides uh, Rita could you go back to the slide where there was this overwhelming I won't say overwhelming, but um, there certainly is a significant movement out there that is actually in support of a merger between AMNO and PASS, and this is something that not to be underestimated. No? This one, yeah. Uh, and the next one, okay, ne next one, just on Malays. Okay, why is it 80% of the women want to see a merger? Uh, the, the, the difference between the Malay male and the Malay female, I, I, ha I can't really explain. But I think overall, if you look at the Malay population, 66% of the Malays out there think that there should be a merger between AMNO and PAS. It's just a matter of timing. Uh, timing, two, depends on one, of course, Nick Aziz's uh, 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 mortality, right? I mean, that is a, a reality. And uh, two, uh, how how much the conservatives uh, 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 actually have a hold on the party over the so-called liberals, and that has yet to be seen. Uh, and and we, we, we uh, and until the party uh, polls are over, we, we we think that the conservatives uh, are likely to have the upper hand rather than the liberals, from what we see right now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the question was uh, the rhetoric from Utusan will it backfire? Yeah. Um, actually, I, I would like to answer that by asking whether um, you are aware of uh, this guy is a non-state actor. He, his name is Muhammad Nor Abdullah. He's a former uh, court of appeal judge. And he's now become the new uh, hero of Malaya, you know, uh, so to speak. Yeah. Um, the the reason why I am um, highlighting this this man's uh, involvement is because Utusan has given him a lot of um, space. And what he has done, the latest thing that he has done, is to propose a treason act. Yeah, a treason act to protect the royal uh, institution from being um, maligned. Okay, um, that that's significant in the in, in the sense that what it says is, <clears throat> uh, you know, the Malays feel perhaps um, slighted or insecure uh, when when um, uh, when there are um, people out there who question the the role of the the royalty. Um, that's one thing. The other thing that he talked about was. Um, uh, wanting a green zone of Malay reserve land uh, established in um, constituencies, uh, in urban constituencies, so that uh, there will always be more Malays uh, uh, voting in, in urban areas. I, I mean, he's come up with all these things, and it's interesting that he also wants 67% share of Malays uh, or Bumiputras in education, civil service, especially in business. The other thing he said, which was uh, what was also very, very um, uh, um, ominous, was that um, uh, the Chinese plotted to seize political power even though they already have economic power. This is what he said. And uh, lastly, um, he said, betrayal can lead to uh, a wrath which which will be endless. I mean, if you translate it, that's what it means, yeah? Now, th the reason why I'm saying this is uh, is that there, there seems to be more attention given to these kinds of voices. Um, and I, I'm not sure whether the Utusan thing will backfire because there are, there are people out there who, in their quiet moments, 
you know, have said that Utusan does rep represent a, a lot of a lot of um, ma uh, the Malay thinking out there. But the fact that this particular this man, a former court of uh, uh, of appeal uh, judge, yeah, has been given such a lot of publicity, and I'm very sure you will be hearing more about him, more so than you would Ibrahim Ali or. Um, Zulkifi, Nordin, you know, the, the Picasso guys. Um, I think that will point to um, the direction that um, uh, where the Malays are, 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 many of the Malays are heading. You know, that he's given the, the kind of uh, credibility, the kind of support, the kind of attention. So I don't, I don't know whether it answers your question, but I think it's something that you, that we need to Follow and Do you think the young urban Malays are going to buy into that? Uh, in, Lemah, in Lembah Pantai, which is where uh, the three of us voted, yeah, uh, there, was, um, there was this young man, uh, only one man, but he was in charge of all the young people who went out on behalf of uh, the BN candidate. And he said the feeling of betrayal because what they did was they reached out to all the races, everyone, and, and, um, and yet, and, and, and he said many of the Chinese came to him and said, oh, we need this help, we need that, we need this, can you do is this for us, you know? And yet these very people who didn't vote for, for the BN candidate, they felt a very strong feeling of betrayal. And these are the people who are reading Utusan now. They didn't earlier. So I'm not sure what that says. Yeah. Okay, um, I just like to pick up the question on the social media. Um, I think that both the, I think it's important to also uh, take note of this point uh, uh, before we talk about just the social media. Uh, what happened is that there are 2.5 million, about 2.5 million copies of newspapers that are circulate, produced per day in Malaysia, total, uh, all language, right? of which one million copies are Chinese newspapers. Okay, the Chinese newspapers, there are 14 Chinese newspapers in Malaysia. Um, and the highest circulation newspaper that is circulated in all language is Sinju Daily at 450,000 <coughs> copies a day. And the next newspaper that is the higher circulation, I mean similar, would be a Malay paper, maybe Berita, Harin or Sinar or one of them. And then also at the same time, you will be reading a lot of, uh, a lot of people who read English, they think, they think that actually the, chi the English newspapers are higher circulating, but actually they are the lowest among all the three languages. Okay? And the star has about 250,000 copies a day only. So actually what has happened is that the Chinese community in Malaysia is very closely linked to the Chinese newspapers. They, uh, that brings me to the point of the social media use. Uh, because I worked in the newspapers, the Chinese newspaper, for eight years, okay, since you daily. And what we've discovered is that the Chinese have very close affinity reading the Chinese uh, dailies. And also at the same time, they don't, do, they don't use anything on Twitter as much as they do um, as much as maybe the Malays or in English that you see, but the Chinese would use Chinese Facebook. Okay, so a lot of the messages uh, that campaign messages, even I receive them, uh, and everybody else is, it's this personal thing uh, from your friends, you know, to say how to vote against B. And this is, um, you know, it's not. This is like a quite a proactive anti-BN campaign uh, within your own friends, you know, and they will post up things uh, in your Facebook. And there's also been, uh, we have also received uh, on our handphones uh, a lot of uh, messages, uh, campaign messages coming from both sides. And a lot of the numbers were from foreign numbers, you know. I had like plus four four something, which is a UK based uh, uh, phone number. So the ex there's been quite extensive use of just not um, the newspapers had a play, the free-to-air had, and everybody was getting sick and tired of all the BN uh, campaign messages that were in, uh, on the, on the free-to-air. 
um, and also at the same time in the in the newspapers. But the Chinese newspapers, uh, because if you don't read in Chinese, you don't know what they are really saying, and you're looking at the translation. Okay, so the reading habits and the use of media is slightly different for the communities. Okay. So um, then, and then the use of, uh, there was a lot of the use of the smartphones. And I would also like to point out that there were hell of a lot of cyber troopers out there. Okay, seen, I mean, you don't know who they are. I mean, people allege that there's the Red Army Bean and whatever, you know, you've been reading Red about Army. Red Bean Army. Red Bean Army. Uh, yeah. But there were, the political parties did employ people, uh, all of political parties did, okay, not just. Uh, not just opposition, they employed their cyber troopers uh, to attack whatever that is coming out. Okay, for instance, the minute that uh, uh, Tan Sri Michelle Yeo came out to support BN, all the cyber troopers went in to attack her. You see? So it was, it, it, it's kind of like uh, both sides, all right? So there was heavy, heavy use of social media to attack personal attacks, and there was a lot of hate messages and all that, which is very bad, you know. I think Malaysia going forward is really quite split. It's really kind of like split in the middle, because if you see uh, the total number of votes and so on and how people are behaving, uh, it's actually not healthy, you know. It, it, it's reached an un unhealthy sort of a level. Uh, as to the question of past, right, it's very interesting. I think we will see the, the Muktama is coming already. What is going to happen to uh, Nick Az uh, post Nick Aziz and post Hadi Awa? Definitely within the past groups, there are forces that will are very interested in coming back with Amno within. It may not be the whole of the 21 seats, right? It may be half of them. But they certainly are split within past uh, four or five groups, okay? So I think the soul searching will come. Um, I think past also will have a lot of soul searching to do how they're going to uh, go forward, all right? What sort of path they are going to uh, take. But Amno and past talking to each other, it's ongoing. It's always ongoing. It's only, I guess, a matter of timing that they will come back together in some form or shape. Okay. So um, going forward, it's not so much studying the Chinese community, but studying the Malay Muslim community and the East Malaysians. Because I guess that for the Chinese community, they have already decided. But how they are going to influence the political system and tactically or strategically influence Malays uh, to come on their side uh, will be quite interesting uh, you know, going forward. Thank you. Okay. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Well, let's thank all our three ladies. That, that in Rose, uh, Miss Wee and Rita, uh, and hope you come back again soon. Thank um, you for inviting us. Yeah. So we have, um, I think when we conduct the fresh polls and all that, I'll let you know. Okay, sure. Are, are, of course, you thank you. Right. And for those who want to discuss Malaysian politics more, come back on Friday uh, uh, when uh, Saifuddin Abdullah will be here to talk about how he lost in Tamalo. Yes, that will, yeah, yeah, that will be very interesting. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you.